Today we're talking about Avengers Grimm. Time War. Welcome back to the Backseat Critics. My name is RJ. Hey guys, I'm Andrew. Oh, fantastic. This is a podcast where uh, we generally talk about movies that you should steer clear of. But this movie you want to steer into. You do. Full uh, force. Time wars. You know, I'm I'm dropping right now. This is my final thoughts. Everyone should watch this. All kids should watch this. Five out of five stars. I see no flaws. Five out of five. No, not the ten out of ten. Five out of five. Ten out of ten. However you want to dice it. Oh, okay. It's a perfect movie. It was cut the acting. Gold. I mean... Special effects. Sleeping Beauty? Woo! <laughs> oh, yeah. What did you think of Snow White? Aurora? Woo! Red, Little Red Riding Hood? Yeah. Alice? Yeah. Snow White? Sleeping Beauty? <laughs> Woo! Well, we got a one-minute summary, I believe. I'm sorry. That was really rude of me. That was very rude of you. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm I, very I apologize. I'm that was appalled. Uh, you know, I, I made fun of someone there for a joke. That's that's unnecessary. But we are here for the one-minute summary. We are. Uh, and you know what? It's your turn, I think. It is my turn. I was going to be the big man and volunteer. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's your turn anyway. So, <laughs> with that being said. You know, I'm going to volunteer for this. I'm taking one for the team. Oh, okay. So we start off. Uh, and uh, dude pops through portal, sees um, not John Voight on the beach, combing through the sand. And okay, cool. Um, sorry, I was just checking the, the audio there. Um, oh, let's see the timer. Was, uh, I got started a little late, but you're uh, 48 seconds in. Yeah, no. Um, And then... Uh, he's chased by Gil Lady and Gil Army, and they they chase him, and she's like, I want the ring and to marry you, but mostly just the ring because it gives me powers over things. And he's like, no, I'll never do that. And then the the Avengers, who are just uh, Snow White, Red Riding Hood, Alice, the Mad Hatter. 20 and, seconds. And uh, Aurora, and uh, I think that's it. Is that it? I, I think so. There's like five of them. Ten um, seconds. Anyways, they save it. They stop. Uh, Snow White gets the ring. They they get married. They live happily ever after. Like, hey, we're going to be look through Looking Glass Avengers. You do. <laughs> we done. I'm not. I'm not sure if that's how the. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> you got stuck on names there. What names? Aurora. Anyways, so we're going to we're going to dive into a kind of a, a, a now kind of classic topic for us. Oh, we've got we've got some A grade actors here, fantastic actors. But if if you had to replace it with someone else, mm-hmm. in in the non adult industry, <laughs> who are you replacing them with? I am going to go Kevin Hart. No, too much Kevin Hart in the world these days. Uh, I take that back. I'm going to go Jack Black. Give me Jack Black. And I'm gonna Jack Black is who? Rumpelstiltskin. Oh. Jack Black is Rumpelstiltskin. Give me that. Jack Black is Rumpelstiltskin. Okay. That's okay. what I'm feeling. I'm feeling Rumpelstiltskin is probably the easiest character to replace in this movie to enhance the movie. And I feel like Jack Black is my guy. Hmm. I feel like he'd deliver, give me some more humor behind what is a bit more fan. Or it gives it a little, a little touch about making it closer to just being impeccable. Yeah. Who you got? Um, all right, hear me out. I'm Fantastic, missing. right? So, I'm I'm going to go with 
Man, I just had it. Uh, I'm going to replace Prince Charming. With? Will Ferrell. Who played Cyclops? In? X-Men? I don't know. Do you think he would play a better Prince Charming? Maybe. Army Hammer? <laughs> <laughs> Only if he's eating people. Army Hammer, though. Yeah. Um, I think... Russell Crowe? Sure. Paul Giamatti, you know, just throw that in there for you. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Dench? Judy Dench. Who wouldn't... Who wouldn't go after Prince Charming if Prince Charming was Judy Dench? Um, you know, you're not. I, even I think Rob. Ge- <laughs> 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 Finish that thought. Gilbert. <laughs> okay. Arenas. <laughs> he might not. He might not. He might not. You think? You think our man Cartier Bob? Is not going for Dame Judy Dench. No. I think he's going for that person. What? Hmm? He's going for du- Judy Dench? No. <laughs> you think he's crushing on Judy Dench? No. Oh, hey, hey, hey. New way to terrorize uh, Plano Games. Because we know they're not going to listen to this part. No. They just skipped over it. We, uh, we should we should find just some print off some pictures of du- Judy Dench, find some memorabilia about Judy Dench, and just one piece at a time, just slowly start bringing it into the studio. Judy Dench, just Judy Dench. <laughs> give it give it two months. The Play No Games podcast. It's going to be all about J- Dame Judy Dench. <laughs> so. We start on an island. <laughs> Not an island, I guess an ocean. It's a beach. It's a beach. It's, it's a, a terrible beach. beach. There, it's like a tropical beach, but then their headquarters are in LA. They're showing establishing shots from New York. And then the forest is, I don't know, it's Northern California is my assumption. I just think it's funny that this old man is sitting on the beach and this, this gal appears and he's just like, whoa, she's beautiful. Wowie, wowie, wowie. I'm sorry. If, it, if anybody appears just randomly, I'm gone. <laughs> just like out of a puff of smoke. I'm gone. It was like a magical blue dust or electric slits. thing. Sure. Just boof. There's just somebody. Whoop. Same with uh, Prince Charming though. Didn't he just magically appear as well? Or yeah. Did he cro- well, yeah. Prince Charming like jumped out through one. Yeah. Uh, did... Because you've you've seen the first one. This is a second. Yeah, this is the second one. Does the first one leave off in a cliffhanger? Not that I remember. I believe they defeat that Rumpelstiltskin. Just kind of leave that there. Okay. And you got Mr. Lou Frigno in it. Lou Frigno. In the first one. Lou Frigno yeah. plays in the first one. I, I was kind of shocked. I was like, what is Mr. Lou doing here? No kidding. Yeah. He's like Iron John or something like that. I think he's supposed to be like John Henry. Okay. I think that because he's not, obviously, he can't be John Henry. <laughs> so I think they just made him Iron John and made him an, like a metal man. So who's Mag- Magda? Magda, she's not in the first one. But who is she? I if, don't know. It's I feel like, like they- Who are they skirting around? Because it's not like this, Aquaman isn't a thing and she's not Little Mermaid. She's definitely not Little no. Mermaid. No. Well, Little Mermaid's from Atlantica, and then now they're talking about Atlantis. And so I'm thinking, just off the top of my head here, Little Mermaid, this is her evil cousin. Mm. Ursula? No, that's like her... Aunt? No. Wasn't that her aunt? Oh, I don't know, in Disney... I'm going off my Disney knowledge. I was going to say that's actually King Triton's ex-lover. But. Just, oh. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Because mm. she knew about the Trident. But. I think this is a Ariel's cousin. 
Okay. And because they're from Atlantis. But look like she was from Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> because she had some gills on her neck. R- at times. <laughs> at times. Sometimes they would cover it up. And uh, her, her, she's got some fish minions. And you'd ever, you'd only ever see like six at once tops yeah maybe five and when that when they're walking in you do see like an army of like 20 but it's like obviously cg'd um well man the budget for this movie was ten dollars it just looks like it it looks like it the it was a happy meal the, the army is like no reflection in the water they didn't even bother with that uh they're all walking at the same exact pace their arms swinging in motion together and it just looks so unnatural and not like intimidating. They paid good money bad. for that that army. They paid a couple of pennies per each person. I mean, they were really stretching that ten dollars. Were they? Yeah, you had to. They paid good money for that. Who? Which actor do you think um, got paid the most here? That's a good question. And you know what? I have my answer locked. You think it's Aurora? I think it's Rump- Rumpelstiltskin. Probably, the one to be bad Joker. Yeah, want to be Joker. Yeah, I could see that. You good? I could see that being being the highest paid actor here. You know, Magnet wasn't. <laughs> no, she wasn't surprisingly little. I could see it being one of the top uh, lady actresses in this. Yeah. I could see it being Little Red Riding Hood. I could see it being Alice. I could see it being Snow White, Aurora. Snow White got a stunt double. She did. You're, maybe maybe she is the highest paid because she got a stunt she double. She got a stunt double. Yeah. It was a horrible stunt double. Yeah, just diving on the ground. I do that every day. Yeah. I'm like, oh, hey, woo, diving on the ground. It's how I enter. It's how I come through the doors. Oh, look out. There's a quarter. Diving on ah! the ground. My quarter now. Yeah, I put on black wig and everything. Twenty dollars, twenty dollars. Yeah, I put on black wig and die for twenty dollars. <laughs> Easiest twenty dollars ever made in my life. I'm covered in scabs ninety percent of the time. Exactly. Because I, I just, I dive. I go for it. Why not? Nah, I think that's the, <laughs> the weakest thing in this. Favorite scene. <laughs> go. Favorite scene. Oh, you know what? I, I think my favorite scene is the rumpled silt skin. When he's kind of inside, when he gets put in, his 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 strategy was to be put inside the jail with with Prince Charming. Yeah. And that was just a terrible scene, but it was my favorite. Because you could just see all these things that could happen, and you can just tell that these actors and actresses were petty in this. Oh, and yeah. That kind of showed it right there. A- everyone was acting like they were the main character. Yep. Oh, wait. Actually, I'm going to take back that. That's not my favorite scene. I'm going to take that back. Favorite scene is a little, little Red Riding Hood. Bust out some pistols <laughs> <laughs> and grenades. I, I, I kind of hate you because you did pick my top two. <laughs> really? You did pick my top two. <laughs> that is my favorite. Act. When she busted out the pistols, I'm like. I was I was kind of hoping you were going to stick with that that rumple still skin in the interrogation bit but nope you you went right for the the pistols that you went right one for the piss the grenade the grenade she bu- she busted off two grenades she had two in her hands yeah it, that's probably the best never scene to be seen again no this is this is when cinema is at its pinnacle and then she just got bog- bogged down by a uh, dialogue yeah um did take my two favorite scenes but i am going to go with the i'm going to go with when they first go into the future and they see the older versions of uh prince charming and alice and rumpelstiltskin they really didn't look that old they looked the same age but they put some like fake wrinkles on it but it doesn't look like age wrinkles it looks like i brought this up while we were watching it but it looks like uh, attack the clones like the little shapeshifter oh it's got like little alien wrinkles it looks like that like it's just like 
puffy eyelids. They look like they've been doing some drugs. Let's be honest. It's yeah. They they look yeah, like Prince they were they Prince Charming doing some bath salts. They look like they got some some old age from some drug use. Yeah. It's uh it's not a it's not a good look. They should have honestly just powdered in some like white powder into people's hair and called it a day. Even in that scene or when they when they went back and saw Alice, Alice was they tried to give a little high five. You know, they gave a little high fives to little movies here and there. So you have that one with Alice when they go back when they're older and she's she's trying to act like Johnny Depp from Through the Looking Glass, I believe. Or what's the okay. the second one where he's like Yeah, it's he's, Through the Looking Glass. Is that the second one? Yeah. At least in the books. I don't know the I don't know the movies. The movie whatever the second But it's Alice in Wonderland and then the second book is Through the Looking Glass. I think in that second one, the second movie, she's acting like what Johnny Depp did in there. And then um actually when they introduce Rumple Stiltskin, he does a little a little jester with his hand and a little Rumple Stiltskin kept like he was like talk like this and then he would like look down and like through his eyebrows like this. I think he is trying to mimic the once upon a time Rumple Stiltskin. Did he do that too? He tried. That Rumple Stiltskin though is pretty that actor's good. Mm-hmm. He's got range. He's he's a tough one to beat. You don't think this one's got range? He's got as range as a YouTube actor, a high school YouTube actor trying to make it. That's about him. I think you know. I said um, I said Rumpelstiltskin's probably the top paid. I'm going to take that back. I think Alice is the top paid. Okay, what's your thought thought behind that? Why? She she was kind of lead. It was suggested she's in the first one. She's in the first one. Uh, so I'm assuming the actress is in the first one. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming she got a pretty good paycheck. She's in. She's throughout the movie pretty consistently. My thought with Rumpelstiltskin is because was he in the first one? He the character is he that one is not. So that's why they kept on saying the actor swapped. The actor swapped. So they kept on saying that's a dim, different Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah, and they kept on mentioning that or alluding to that, meaning we swapped actors. Yeah, so y- you kept an actor, which means you probably paid them enough. She was through the movie pretty consistently. And I'm now thinking Rumpelstiltskin was probably chewing up as much scenery as he was because everyone's trying to be the main character in here, um, and acting like they were the the lead. I I think Rumpelstiltskin was just doing that to the nth degree. Acting like he was the lead, yeah. Well, I think when you have a Rumpel Stillskin, and then Once Upon a Time, that kind of has made it its its own role now. Like it's kind of like taking the Joker in some ways, as we as we mentioned. But it's kind of like taking that role or taking on that 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 ideal role. And now you have this actor that has done it so well, and now you're trying to match that actor. And I think that's what what's happening with Rumpel Stillskin these days. Is that you? And now, granted, we haven't seen a lot of Rumpel out there but you see once upon a time rumples and it's like nobody else is gonna match that not this time i haven't seen it so i i can't i mean not any low grade actor okay i think i mean obviously you you have bigger actors that could do their own thing and probably make rumple into something else but wasn't there a rumple stillskin movie that came out recently with peter dinklage not that i know of but i mean that'd be a different type of rumple that was here now yes my bad yeah, that was not a Rumpelstiltskin movie. <laughs> That's a love story. <laughs> is a Rumpelstiltskin a love story? Not in the same way. <laughs> so I I just think that everybody's going to be looking at that the Once Upon a Time Rumpel now. I guess I need to. I guess I need to see that rump. I think you do. Um. What? What fairy tale would you put into this? Hmm. Like, there's a, there's a lot of fairy tales, a lot that we're missing here. Which which fairy tale are you putting? Are we going? In? Are we going Brothers Grimm fairy tales? Or are we going like any actual folk folklore? Any? Can I go folklore? You can go folklore. Come. Okay. I want the El Chupacabra. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I want yeah. the chupacabra. Give me the chupacabra. The, the, the demon dog? Or La Rona. Well, it's a go- uh, Hispanic ghost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> give me. I thought you were like the Corona. Or give me, give me Candyman. I give me Candyman. Um, what you got? You know, my my first pick was going to be Beowulf. I thought about that for a brief second. I really did because it would just be it would be so out of place. Yeah. Uh, imagine Paul Bunyan in this. Oh, man, Paul Bunyan. I Paul Bunyan, that. those bunions. That's what I thought about. <laughs> um, but but I'm now thinking like let's 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 do some Hercules. Throw in some Greek gods. Let's throw in some Greek gods. Let's get some lightning. Let's get some Zeus. Some Poseidon. Some Poseidon. They do mention the underworld and talking about so. Yeah, it's like, where, where's where, Hades? Where's Hades? If we're talking about that, yeah. Uh they they mentioned the the Queen of Hearts. Yeah, that that runs it with Hades. Yeah, or not Hades? That runs it with uh, Rumpel. Rumpel. Yeah, yeah. Um, weird pairing. Was she in the first movie? Maybe I need to go back and watch the first movie. In all honesty, it's been a while. It's been future episode. Nine years. Nine years since I watched it. So it was one of those late night scrolls, uh, I believe, on Netflix. And I was just like, ah, I want to watch something that's off the wall. And that came up. And I was like, huh, I want to give this a try. So I did. Mothman. Mothman? Mothman. Mothman don't play by anybody's rules. He ain't your daddy's Batman. The giant purple people eater? Grimace? <laughs> Ronald McDonald, he's a folklore, right? He's an American folklore. <laughs> right. Let's put Ronald McDonald in this. Dude, I saw, I, I was scrolling through Instagram uh, before we came in here, and I saw an ad of Ronald talking about some wall of cheese. And Grimace is in the back looking like an absolute nightmare. He's just like jumping up and down and doing... And if I saw any of the McDonald's characters, I mean, if you come up to me with a walking chicken nugget, I'm I'm punting that. Also, Ronald McDonald's pants like ended just short of his knee. Ronald McDonald is the greatest killer of all time. Oh, what heart disease? <laughs> Cholesterol. <laughs> you tell me. He is the greatest killer of all time. It's really weird that they chose a clown as the mascot. I know they're trying to appeal to kids back in the 60s. But clown is kind of weird. Yeah, most kids are afraid of clowns. And then now you got it out there. Yeah. You've got, you got, like, you would think once John Wayne Gacy does his thing, you'd be like, no more clowns. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we're not, we're t- pulling all clowns from advertising. The Hamburglar is the guy. Yeah. No, <laughs> like, you mean- I mean, you could have made it like into a tricks thing, you know? Right. The um, hamburger. What? Or just make it Grimace. <laughs> also, yeah, let's just, just go Grimace. Lean into Grimace. Mayor McNugget. Let's lean into Mayor McNugget? Mayor oh, McNugget. Oh, yeah, that's right. Let's lean into him. What, what was that bird? Yeah. There's a chick. She had like goggles or something. And yeah. A jumper. She's wearing like the same outfit that the World War Two like woman suffrage like we can do it like poster had. Is he growing up in the nineties though? Oh, the Moon Man. We had. What was the Moon Man? Yep, I remember there was a Moon Man. He like played the piano. I I I actually kind of loved that guy. I loved that era. Now, do you remember Burger King's people though? I remember the 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 king. There was, before the king, like, when you went to Burger King, there was, like, kids. I don't know exactly what they were or anything like that. I didn't know their names, but there was, like, kids. And they almost looked like they were knockoffs of somewhere between Magic School Bus and Planet, or what's it, the Mr. Earth, Planet Earth, whatever. Oh, Captain Planet? Captain Planet, the mixture between those two. That's a weird mix. That's what it looked like. Why would you do that? I don't know. Burger King was on something. 
just like this movie. <laughs> this movie like, did anything it can to. The movie's like, hey, we're going to have characters make stupid decisions to pad out the plot line. and We're going to have a character say, go into the gate, but don't go into the gate, but go into the gate. Right. But if you're coming out, you need my permission. But do not let anyone, including yourselves, come out. Yeah. It's just like, what? <laughs> Threw so me off. stupid. Also, I love that uh, Magda, who, is, who we were just talking about making up these wild rules um there are no rules she she uses her little scepter to vaporize like what three or four people throughout the movie she just like shoots some beam out and just like vaporizes them she occasionally stabs them into the floor and like blasts which stabbing in this movie do you really get stabbed in this movie so no no she's like stabs in the floor and it sends out like a shockwave she shoots people with a laser but then she shoots everyone with a laser, but the one person she stabs is Rumpelstiltskin, who then comes back and. Well, I mean, stabbing and, in this movie doesn't seem to do anything. No, it doesn't. Because there's no holes, there's no blood. It doesn't do yeah, anything. I could stab you, and there'd be like, it's like those fake. But knives, it's like, why? Knives. Why have a character who shoots everybody besides Rumpel? Besides Rumpel, because it serves the plot. Because which I just answered my own question, but like that. That doesn't make sense character-wise. I mean, this whole movie doesn't make sense. I mean, let's be honest. I've seen student films with better plots than this. And the quality of it. But one thing I will say. We re- recently saw Pluto Nash. And now we watch this. If you're be like, hey, what movie, what movie do you want to sit down and watch? I might go with this. Just for the entertainment value of how terrible it is, it's kind of like, yeah. like it's it's not it's not like a landslide better or anything, but just like stupid schlocky B movie entertainment. Like, yeah, I'm gonna pick this. I think it's like on the same tier as Sharknado. Yeah, like how bad it is. It's kind of on the same tier as like a Sharknado idea. Yeah, we're 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 getting like right into that. So it's so bad, it's good. But they have a better the actor. House that bleeds blood. The room. Uh, Annie Roger Corman, rest in peace. Uh, Birdemic, like, yeah, this fits right in. Right in with bad movies. Joel Schumacher's Batman. See that this is though, I think is done better than movies that are trying to be like scary movie. But not oh, like by the parody th- movies. Yeah, the parody yeah. movies. This was better than the parody movies because it was its own thing. It had its own, like it actually kind of ran off of its own like storyline and everything. Compared to the parody movies where they tried to just the parody movies get so caught up in just making like specific point by point like parodies of things and references and, that it doesn't actually yeah. focus on like any coherent plot. Or like a build up to a joke, something where you do the build up early in the film and the punchline is later. That's why I that like kind of thing. I like this more than like scary movie. Yeah, I mean, I like scary movie better. Or uh, sorry, like uh, was it like epic movie and like the superhero movie? I like those a little bit better. I don't like. There's one called um, Avengers of Justice or something like that. I have not seen that. It is terrible. <laughs> I watched it the other day. I was like, this is awful. You didn't invite me? Uh, you, you, this this was the better watch today. <laughs> you didn't invite me? It was the better watch. Oh, dude. I think I watched it before we moved. So, What? My final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, I think... I think um, I think really in the end, any kid of any age would be okay watching this, but I would probably say like seven and up just because it's so wildly incoherent that kids younger than seven are going to have questions that like you're not going to have answers to. They're not going to understand what's so entertaining about it. I think that seven, eight, maybe nine that kind of range you're going to start to understand like 
this is so bad it's good um i'm gonna i don't know if i can rate this maybe a six maybe a six maybe a six six point five we're not doing seven but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stick with maybe a six um it it's a good bad movie could be worse i and both a worse in a good way and worse in a bad way i think i'd probably wait until the kid's older to be honest with you this is actually i like a movie that you'd scroll through like comcast back in the day and see as like a free movie kind of thing um i would just wait till they're older just because of i guess they wouldn't they'd watch this and probably get bored there's not a lot of like suggestive scenes or anything like lewd like that. No, I mean, I guess the 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 most lewdest thing is some of the outfits. But I mean, it's almost as equivalent to the ones that you see in Descendants. Yeah, it's it's pretty tame. So I would say though that I would just I think Descendants is easier to follow. This is like a poor man's Descendants to me. Almost. Yeah, that's actually a good comparison. Yeah. Like a Walmart version of of Descendants and. For that, though, I think I would rate this probably like a four. There is some entertainment there, some value. I would, if somebody's like, let's watch this, I'd be like, fine. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to like say no. I've seen this movie before, but um, I'd give it a four. I, I do think it goes on a little too long. It does. They could have cut it out 15, 20 minutes. It's still been a okay. good 15, 20 minutes. You probably could have made this an hour. It was an hour 30, I believe. This could have was been an hour 30. It was an hour 30. Felt like an hour 45. Then it felt like we were sitting there for two hours. No, yeah. it was, it was an hour 30. Um, I think it could have been an hour. <laughs> you could have made this movie in an hour. Yeah. Yeah. The, you, they should have, they should have made this actually like a short TV series, like a, like a video game, high school or the guild or something along those lines. Right. They should have made it into that. And I think it would probably would have been more successful. I think it would have been a lot. I don't want to say better, but... Better? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, if you like us or our podcast, you found us, you can find us on Instagram at the Backseat Critics. You can find us on YouTube at The Backseat Critics, or you can look us up anywhere else where you get your podcast at The Backseat Critics. Or if you want to find similar podcasts that we're lightly involved in, you can look over at the Play No Games podcast. We always recommend them. We we'll work on the back end there, but sometimes we pipe in and give our, our two cents on whatever topics they're talking about. And until then, we out. <laughs>